All right, I'm here with Frank Morales, and we talked earlier about the trees in Auburn. I guess that's on everybody's mind, especially one we think, how crazy can someone be to do something so just ridiculous? How are you? I'm doing fine. <laughs> Your life is never dull. No, no, it isn't. I, I think. You know, what we were talking about earlier, about the trees and things like that, and talking about uh, this individual involved. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that happened is, uh, you know, and what my thought process was about uh, why this person did these things. A lot of times in life, we have a lot of expectations. Mm -hmm. Your expectations aren't met, okay? And a lot of times when our expectations aren't met, we get angry, and we start getting bitter about a lot mm -hmm. of things in life. We're mad, we're disappointed, it just builds up in you. Do you think this was just an exploding point for him? Right. I think that, that you know, this bitterness sets in. These bitter, all this bitterness turns into a lot of resentments. Mm -hmm. And these resentments just build up into this little barrel. And all it does is just this builds up, builds up, and builds up. And as resentments build up in your life, a lot of people turn, you know, these, these actions that happen to us where we become the victim over and over and over again. And then people just turn into things like, I'm going to do something about it. I'm, I'm the victim. I'm the victim. Now I want to be, I want to become powerful. I'm going to act out. And they think by doing something, mm -hmm. it makes them, well, see, I, I, I'm the judge now. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. And if they think it makes them a good person. And a lot of times, it has nothing to do with the action itself. And this guy right here, if you look at his life, and like I said earlier, the fact that he has uh, 18 years and retired, I've just personally mm -hmm. never heard of an 18-year retirement unless it was for uh, some kind of disability or something like that. And he was in a, you know, a position, uh, state patrol, and in my yeah, own personal... State trooper. Yeah. And, high position. Yeah, in, in my own personal family, I come from a family that... Uh, I have a, a brother that retired as a policeman himself in Oakland, California, and he did 27 years. And you know, I had a father that was in law enforcement also, so I know that that's not how that system works. Right. Okay. And that was a red flag for you when they read, you know, none of us caught that. Yeah. That was and, a red flag for right. you. Right. And so I just know that's not how that system works. And, you know, that's a position where people are used to telling people what to do. Mm -hmm. And then if you get divorced. It's a powerful position. Right. And if you, you get a divorce, and then you're talking about what you have, your possessions. Well, that's Which not... Which was hardly anything. Right. So that's, that's, that's announcing, I have nothing to lose. Right. Okay. But yet everyone knows his name now. Right. He's so, in the spotlight. You know, why do you call? Why do you call and announce it mm -hmm. and even tell exactly what I gave them. Right. See, what I'm saying is, look, look how smart I am. I gave something and I gave such an amount that you can't do anything you about can't stop it. it. So I'm telling you how smart I am. Look at me. Hmm. So that's not about football. Yeah. That's about how smart I am and ha ha ha. Now I may be a big football fan, but that's the vehicle I used to do that. And here's a small group of people who love football so much that they'll think I'm a hero for doing it. But the reality is, I'm getting back at society for all the things it did to How me. How I was wrong. Right. He feels it's wrong. It's for my divorce. It's for the state patrol or whatever. It's for this. It's for that. And that's what he's doing. And it all builds up. You deal with people every day, mostly uh, domestic violence and or anger management, uh, people, conflict resolution. Right, people going through divorces mm -hmm. and all that. And this is what people do. What they do is it's for the people, let's say, that I didn't get the promotion or I didn't get the raise or maybe you're at school and I didn't get the right grade or maybe someone cut into a parking space and took my space. All the little wrongs that happened to you during the day or during your life and then the next thing you know, some little thing happens and I get you back for all the things that happened in my life at one time. It's the cherry on the top and I decide I'm going to take the law into my hand and do that and I feel justified in doing it and that's why a lot of times people do things and they say it's for this reason and it really isn't 
-hmm. It's to get you back for all the things that have happened in my life of those things. I think in one article we read, he was actually mad because they rolled Tumors Hall when, or the trees rather, when uh, Bear Bryant's anniversary of the death, or when he died rather. And you think, why did you wait so long before you were telling it? And that makes sense where everything's building up, and then that was something that was close to his heart, football, Alabama football, so he probably mm -hmm. picked that. Do you think because as this case is more researched and everything, but you're going to find out a lot more, you know, after the fact, you always hear, oh, there were signs. There were signs he was about to explode. Right. Oh, it never fails. Uh, you, you always hear those things. But what you find out is that they have anger, and it, it, that right there in itself, it's not something that he did it for that, but it's just something that that became the convenient excuse for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's look at even the case like in New York City where the guy killed all those people right. the week before last. And what was it about? His stepfather did not let him borrow the, his mother's Lexus. Vehicle. So he mm -hmm. killed him. Then he goes out and he ends up stabbing a bunch of other a people. Stabbing, I mean, and he free. stabs this innocent person there and he stabs this person, he stabs this person, he stabs this person. But he felt justified in doing it. Mm -hmm. Once someone gets to a certain point, they feel justified in doing all the other behavior behind it. Let's look at what's happening in the Middle East now. Now all the co countries, they have one thing tumble and now because of the oppression they felt they have, Everybody feels like it from country to country to country. I believe. Uh, Even here at home in Michigan, right. now the unions are on an uproar because those jobs are no longer going to be available. They can't continue to pay those high dollars, but yet they're, they're comparing their situation to Egypt. Right. So this is what you're going to see. You're going to see. Uh, you're going to see a chain reaction of things that happen, mm -hmm. and everyone feels the, these types of pressures from it. So once we start, and a lot of times. When we feel this pressure over here, we're going to build all our resentments are going to spill out and it's going to justify a negative behavior. And how far someone carries it is, is the question. Because things that you know that are wrong, when you're in a certain mentality, you will act out on it. Mm -hmm. Because let's say you go back now to your state trooper. Your state trooper would not have done that, let's say, in a vacuum. He would have known this is totally wrong to do it. But if I keep building things in my resentment barrel, then I'm going to justify that same behavior later on and say, oh, that's perfectly okay. What would you say to someone who's woken up this morning and they're just mad at the world? Well, the person that's mad at the world and they have all those resentments, if you don't get rid of those resentments, you're going to sooner or later justify to do almost anything negative. And then suffer consequences. And the consequences, consequences will come. Because look what he's actually done. He's yeah. going to wake up at some point and say, I have literally thrown away my life mm -hmm. over something so silly as poisoning some trees. And I mean, just the priceless trees. You know, we were, gonna, we're going to be talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, Harlan Mitchell coming up in just a little bit. He could literally get 10 years in prison for this, but yet the statute says the trees are worth $20, which I'm sure they'll argue that they're worth a whole lot more. They're priceless, oh, yeah. actually. Right. And uh, I mean, this is going to be a very publicized case. So do you think he's still going to be justified because he's getting all of this attention right now? What do you think he needs much more than a 13-week anger management class? I, I think he needs much more than that. And see, that's where, you know, the, the legal side of that is, is going to be one end. There's going to be the psychological side because there's going to be some people who say, oh, you know, he's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, he needs psychological help. There's going to be all sorts of things. And what it comes down to is in our society now, we have more and more excuses for behavior. Right. Okay. We try to make up excuses right. for bad behavior. And that's where we're coming to. Mm -hmm. How much do we hold someone personally responsible for their behavior? That's the end Think question. they'll make an example out of him? I think that at some point we have to hold people personally responsible for their behavior. I think they should because unfortunately there will probably be some type of retaliation. Yes. Unfortunately. Mm. Okay. And on Facebook you can already see it right now with the Auburn and the Alabama fans right. saying stupid Bamas fans, you know, or stupid Bam Bammers. There's always a bad one in the crowd. <laughs> right.
that, but that doesn't make theirs any better. It doesn't better. make it right? No. Okay. Well, thank you, Frank. And if okay. you need to sign up for anger management or get in touch with him, you most certainly can. That's Huntsville uh, Service Center right there, down, well, downtown Huntsville, yeah, just Huntsville, about. Yeah, family Services. Family Center. Services. Thank you. I always lose that family in there. <laughs> thank okay. you, Frank. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Still more to come. Uh, Harley Mitchell's here. We're going to talk on the legal side of this issue and, of course, the Coleman Dental Group. And Matthew Kyle will talk about Chick-fil-A as well. Stay with us. Oh, the love in me.